Hi guys, I just want to talk about something exciting which I found um, on the internet. I just stumbled upon it and it's something on the future of how we give vaccines, especially to children or even adults. So this is a study that was conducted in the Gambia, which is a country in West Africa, in the western part of Africa. Uh, it was overseen by the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, um, but it was conducted in the Gambia. Uh, and, uh, a lot of the doctors involved in this study are Nigerians and I think doctors from the Gambia and, and, and some, some Western doctors as well uh, who work with the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. So this is something exciting. Um, it's called a microarray patch. So microarray uh, patch or micro needle uh, patch technology is, is something that is, I think it's been around for quite a while now, but it hasn't been used for vaccine delivery. Uh, it's been used to deliver some, some other forms of medications, um, you know, so it's a patch, essentially a patch that's placed on either the arm or the, you know, the forearm of a person. As you can see this child here, you can see that, uh, that stuff, that whitish patch there that's placed on his arm. So it's something that is used to deliver uh, or that's been proposed to deliver the vaccine over a slower, you know, slower, like it's, it's normally what we do in vaccines is you just stick in a needle and push everything in at once uh, and the disadvantages of that is or maybe the side effects could be obviously pain the size of the needle uh, apprehension so the, you might see a child who's refusing you know a needle a parent refusing a needle uh, because they have needle phobia they're scared of needles or they might have had preconceived uh, notions about the side effects or the potential dangers of vaccination uh, one of which is autism. There's a growing speculation, even though a lot of research has shown that there's no link or there's no proven link. Uh, I think I'll use the word proven um, because science is based on evidence. So there's no evidence that vaccines are, are linked to the development of autism. If in future there's now evidence to support that, then at that point in time, you know, science will obviously acknowledge that evidence, but as, as our things are at the moment, there hasn't been any objective evidence that um, autism is linked to immunization or vaccination. Even though that concern is there and there's a lot of skepticism or cynicism, uh, you know, regarding uh, the acceptance of the, you know, national, international vaccination programs. Um, so I have seen this as something that would actually be really helpful. Uh, if vaccines can be delivered with the microarray patches uh, to help to you know, reduce needle phobia for vaccination. It's obviously be less painful because the the needles are micro needles. They are very tiny needles. Um, just they just latch into the skin, you know, very gently without causing any traumatic pain. Um, so it's actually good. So a little background. Why was this conceived? Um, so the, according to WHO, there was an estimated mortality or death of 128,000 people globally. Uh, from measles in the year 2021, that's a lot. And obviously the mortality can be strongly linked to the absence or the, you know, the, uh, the low vaccine uptake rate, you know, for measles and other vaccinations. Um, so the study was con conducted in the Gambia, as I said earlier, and it was a phase one study. So in vaccine development, usually there's a phase zero, phase one, phase two, phase three. Um, you know, depending on how many, depending on what the scientists are looking at, are they, are they checking the safety? Are they checking how efficacious or effective? You know, are they looking out for obviously side effects? And if side effects are mild, moderate, severe, life threatening side effects? You know, so when well, this situation, I, I think because these are vaccines that people are already familiar with, so we already have a strong knowledge of the side effect profile of these vaccines. Uh, we're just trying to see how effective these vaccines are going to be if we deliver them using the microarray method. So I don't think this study was actually to, to analyze or to assess for safety because is the vaccines already deemed safe. It's more to see how effective this mode of delivery is. And that's why if you look here, it's also phase one. This is it's been written as phase one over two, which means I think they'll probably do if they've done phase one. I think the next level will be the phase two study. I doubt there will be a phase three, which is a much wider with thousands of patients. I doubt because it might not be necessary. If, 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 this, if it passes stage one and stage phase one or phase two, I think it's fine. Um, 
and this trial in the Gambia was you know conducted on 285 individuals or subjects um, 45 adults 120 toddlers and 120 infants um, I have already seen it here but on when I looked into the methodology it was patients or individuals who were healthy so anyone who was malnourished for instance who suffered malnourishment or you know malnutrition or anything or they were acutely unwell they just or chronically unwell they were not included in this study and um, so the trial showed that these microarray patches actually induced a very strong immune response so when vaccines are delivered into the body what we're looking for is an immune response we're hoping that the body our bodies build and you know build antibodies build t cells build antibodies um as well as you know to protect ourselves against uh, any further exposure to to that antigen or that virus or bacterium so that's the whole essence of vaccination or immunization so the study actually showed that the body that's actually this mode of delivery did what it was meant to do or what it was being proposed to do so the microarray patches you know they delivered vaccines effectively as the conventional injection which is what we're trying to achieve now over 90 percent of the infants were protected from measles and all the infants were protected from rubella so that's very significant everyone 120 um you know infants in the study were protected from rubella that's something that is very important to note there were no safety concerns observed with the microarray vaccine delivery which is good as i said you know the vaccines are similar if not the same vaccines that we've been injecting we're just trying to give it in a different way so we didn't or i'm saying we but i wasn't part of the study i'm just used to saying we when i'm talking about it so the 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 the, the, the doctors and you know the other scientists who carried out the study did not expect you know any different side effect profile from the already you know used measles measles uh, vaccine or the mr vaccine so uh, it was conducted in the Gambia, as I said earlier, um, and the micro micron biomedical, uh, you know, they were, were the ones who actually sponsored these uh, this research. But the funding was from Bill Gates and uh, Melinda, you know, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So Bill Gates is very much involved uh, in vaccines, vaccine development. Uh, and a lot of um, a lot of health research, you know, globally and especially in Africa. You can see this was carried out in the Gambia. So it's obviously this technology or this mode of delivery of vaccines, you know, hold a lot of promise for achieving a high population immunity against childhood diseases like measles and rubella. Rubella previously used to be called German measles, but I think it's now called rubella because um, that's probably not an acceptable term to describe it as German measles um it's pretty promising uh so advantages in low resource settings you know would include easier transportation it's, it was found that it's actually easier obviously easier to transport in vaccines there's something called a cold chain in conventional vaccines with injection there's what we call the cold chain which means the vaccines have to preserve that certain cold temperatures to maintain their viability to prevent them from getting spoiled or becoming you know non-viable we have to maintain that cold chain now, the need for a strict cold chain in transporting these uh, micro needle or micro array devices is not that it's not it's not very much there. So they, 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 are, they are more likely to retain their viability uh, without that strict cold chain system or mode of transportation. And obviously, it's much easier to administer this. You don't need to be highly skilled or highly specialized, like a doctor, you know, you know any healthcare worker, even a parent can administer this with proper you can watch it on youtube and it's something just peel, peel off a seal and place it on the arm and that's it and then obviously to tell you how long you have to place it there for the full dose of that vaccine you know to be administered probably between 24 hours 48 hours 72 hours you know the pharmaceutical companies will give us the right information on how long that patch should be left on to ensure that the full dose has been administered so when I read this, then one question that went through my mind was why did it, was this study conducted in the Gambia? Because this study was sponsored by an American pharmaceutical company and it's obviously been led by the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, which, who has, which you know, who has its headquarters in London. 
central London. So I was wondering why was this study conducted in Africa? We already know that many African countries in Africa, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, skepticism on vaccination. So I, I was just thinking maybe this was conducted in an African country, West African country to help boost, you know, the, the uptake of vaccines to, to help change the mindset of a lot of people in the rural areas. So that's, poss that's one of the possibilities. Uh, another thing is I had to look for that to ensure that, you know, there were no cutting of corners in terms of uh, standardization, in terms of consent, because before you carry out these kind of studies, you have to ensure that proper consent, you have to ensure that the community members are properly informed on the potential side effects, the essence of the study, what you're trying to achieve, and if they should expect any dangerous side effects. I have to be sure that uh, they were not, uh, you know, uh, lured into into the study. So I looked on the, I think that was Lancet. So I went on to Lancet, which is a reputable, you know, journal. And I, I actually found this. So all participants, all parents or guardians of the participants provided written informed consent, which is absolutely important that this information was provided because people will want to know hoped corners were not caught. The study was approved by the Gambian government, the MRC uh, Joint Ethical Committee, the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine Research Ethics Committee, and the Gambian Medicines Control Agency. So there was a lot of approval uh, to ensure that informed consent, to ensure that, to ensure that the due process was followed, uh, to ensure that the community was not exploited, uh, you know, some pharmaceutical companies or some big com pharma companies sometimes could actually exploit, you know, certain uh, underdeveloped uh, and uninformed communities and carry out some drug or vaccine studies. So I needed to be sure as well that, you know, due process was being followed. And I'm really glad that I found this information on the Lancet Journal. Um, so this is something, this is something really exciting for vaccine delivery. Uh, I hope it passes the phase two trial. And I hope it's safely, uh, it's deemed safe for, for administration for use so that it will help us, you know, improve um, the delivery of vaccination, reduce the impact and mortality from childhood diseases, you know, infective, infectious diseases. So it's something I felt I should share with you uh, just before I set out for work today. I hope you really find this useful. I hope it makes you excited as you go about your day. Um, it's good news for those of us in medicine and for all of us uh, globally in the community. Have a great day, guys. Take care. Cheers. Stay happy. Stay blessed. Bye.